Hi, it's Miss Dolores from Golden Borough Public Library. Welcome to another edition of Big Science, Little People. So this program is geared to children ages three to six, but obviously please feel free um, if you have children of any age to join in because our activity today is gonna to be enjoyed by a lot of kids, even if you're older than six years old. Um, so today we're going to do a story and um, our story is called Sebastian and the Balloon, and it is written by Philip C. Stead. So today we're going to be focusing on air and um, something in specific, uh, specifically resistance, otherwise known as drag. And our activity today um, is going to be our version of a hot air balloon, but instead of a hot air balloon, we're going to make our own parachute um, out of materials that you already have in your home, and we'll do that at the conclusion of the story. Sebastian and the Balloon by Philip C. Stead. Sebastian sat high on his roof, something he was never supposed to do. There is nothing to see on my street, he thought. Nothing to see at all. I'll give you a close up of Sebastian. He looks a little sad, doesn't he? So he's looking down, he doesn't really see anything. Tonight, I'll leave and see something new for a change. So Sebastian gathered all the things he would ever need. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the objects. Looks like he has a pillow. Oh, a boat, a clock, hmm, a baseball bat, an umbrella, flower, teddy bear. It's a lot of different objects. What do you think he's gonna use those for? And when night fell, Sebastian boarded the balloon he'd built from grandma's afghans and patchwork quilts. Okay, so here you can see, this is just a box, a cardboard box with some string and then his grandma's uh, quilt. He charted a course, he checked the breeze, and he cut the strings. Okay, so right now the strings are holding it down on, on the ground so it doesn't float up into the sky. So to get it to go up, he has to cut them. And floated free. All right, so there he is. Soon it was time for a snack. Sebastian landed his balloon beside a leafless tree. Excuse me, asked a bear. Are you a real balloon pilot? Of course I am, replied Sebastian. Are you a real bear? Of course I am, replied the bear. The two looked each other right in the eyes. Would you like a pickle sandwich, asked Sebastian. Do you think bears eat pickle sandwiches? So there they are enjoying sandwiches together. So it looks like Sebastian had to pack some food for his trip. The wind picked up and soon it was time to go. Look who's now in the hot air balloon with Sebastian. Looks like the bear is in there. Up and up and into the milky gray fog. Can you see the end of my nose? asked the bear. But before Sebastian could answer, there came a loud pop. That doesn't sound good when you're in a hot air balloon to have a pop. Let's see where they're, what's gonna happen to the balloon. Oh no. And they fell down, down, down out of the fog and onto the roof of a ramshackle house. I'm sorry, said a very tall bird. It was my fault. It's okay, said Sebastian. Would you like a pickle sandwich? Seems like pickle sandwiches are the answer to everything. 
All right, so you can see the bird's very big and sharp beak poked a hole in his, um, in the quilt. And so the balloon deflated and came down and landed. So the bird is apologizing. Three sisters called out, what are you doing up there? Up on the roof of our house. Our balloon has sprung a leak, answered Sebastian. Oh dear, said the sisters, if only we could find our knitting needles. But luckily, Sebastian had all the things he would ever need. All right, so he has the knitting needles inside that box where he took all of his belongings. And he's gonna let them fix the hole. So here they are, the three sisters are going to fix the hole that is in the quilt. So the sisters could start their mending. You must be having such fun, they said, making loops and tying careful knots of yarn. It's been so long since we've traveled. When we were very young, we'd pack strawberry sandwiches and climb up over the mountain. On the other side is the most perfect roller coaster you will ever see. Soon the knitting was done. And when the wind picked up, everyone knew it was time to go. Okay, so you can see they fixed it and now it can um, continue to go back up again. Up and over the mountain to the most perfect roller coaster they would ever see. Maybe you've ridden, ridden on a roller coaster at Kennywood Park. But the paint was chipped and faded. The beams were bent and broken. The loop the loop leaned badly to one side and flocks of squawking pigeons roosted up and down the track. Oh no, cried the sisters, this is not right. Okay, you can see that they are all in the hot air balloon now. Do you see them all crammed in there? This is not right at all. Luckily, Sebastian had all the things he would ever need. What do you think they're gonna do to this roller coaster? So we'll polish and paint. All right, look at what nice colors, green and blue. So they're painting the cars and they're painting the tracks. So we'll polish and paint, we'll hammer and nail and we'll pull with all of our might. All right, they wanna fix up this rickety old roller coaster. At last, we'll look the pigeons right in the eyes and say, go away. All right, so there's the sisters on the roller coaster track and they're shooing the pigeons off. But the pigeons flew off and all the way back to the leafless tree. Remember this tree that was in the beginning of our book that didn't have any leaves on it? And the tree was glad to have company. Good work, said the sisters. Well done, said the very tall bird. Amazing, said the real bear. Okay, it looks like they put a nice flag at the top after all their work is done. And for the rest of the day and into the night, they rode. Look how fun. I bet you have a favorite ride at your favorite amusement park. And road. Until the wind picked up and it was time to go. All right, so we're going to do um, a nice experiment based off of this book, Sebastian and the Balloon. And I'll show you all the materials that you need um, to make this at home science experiment. So these are all the supplies you will need to make a parachute of your own just from simple things that you already have in your home. So the first thing you will need is just a plastic cup. If you don't have plastic, you can use paper, um, a hole punch or something that you can punch holes into your cup, a pair of scissors and a ruler or tape measure. 
you will need a 14 inch square cut from a plastic bag. It can be a giant eagle bag, it can be a garbage bag, and just some yarn or string. And you'll need four pieces cut in 14 inch lengths. The first thing we're going to do is take our cup and just pretend that you're dividing it into quarters straight across both ways. Um, and you want to make four holes, as you can see, but they need to be directly across from each other. So one on each opposite side um, of the cup. So you'll end up with four holes. And again, just a hole punch or something that can poke a hole into your paper or plastic cup. Next thing we're going to do is you're going to take your garbage bag and you're just going to lay it. You're going to use your tape measure or your ruler and you're going to measure. This is good um, to practice um, length and also numbers on a ruler. So you're going to get uh, 14 inches so you can see that it ends at 12 right here and then you're going to add two more inches so this is good for addition also so if you're working with your child on addition skills so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect as you can see mine's a little um, you know off on this side as far as straightness but just so you pretty much have a 14 inch square then you're going to take your yarn and again you're going to want four 14 inch lengths so you're going to take um, one corner and you're going to tie a knot and your child will probably need help with this part so you just want to tie a knot but you want to make a short tail not you not using most of the of the yarn on this part so you want to tie a knot so that it looks like this and then you're going to have the remainder of your string so this side I'll turn it around just a real short tail and you're gonna do that to all four corners of your plastic. Once you have all four corners knotted and tied, what you wanna do, you're gonna have four of these strings, one at each corner. You want to make sure that they are the exact same length. So again, this is really good for kids to use their measuring skills and their numbers, and you want to measure uh, from the knot to the end of the string, like mine for example is 10 and a half inches. So whatever your shortest string is, cut the all the strings on each side to that length so that you will have an equal distribution of the length so you don't want your parachute lopsided. And so for the last part, what you're gonna do is you're going to tie these strings Put it through the hole that you already pre-punched into your cup and just knot it in all four places. So you kind of want to try to keep the string or yarn at the same length all the way around again so that your parachute won't be lopsided. So you just want to knot it on like that or you can do it on the inside. So this is what your finished product will look like. And then the fun part where you can go outside, it's nice if you have a balcony or something higher where you can, um, where children can stand and let just drop this from somewhere high and let, let it see it float down. So if you actually put this plastic part and stuffed it inside the cup, it would just drop really quickly. But because the air is going underneath the plastic. It is slowing, it's um, resisting. So it's letting the air get in and just gently uh, float it down. So you can make as many of these as you want. You can have races with these. 
Um, so something just really fun to teach children about air resistance um, or drag. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, our next program will be on Tuesday, November the 24th, when we will do our final um, Tuesday morning program for the fall session, and we're going to be doing Tiny Tales. So I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you then.